Hello there, it's Bella May. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're looking at part 3 of my tutorial about replicating Clara's toy soldier outfit from the 2018 film, The Nutcracker and the Four Realms. This third and final installment of this tutorial is all about the skirt. The outer skirt is made up of the heavy weight red wool. And this candy striped taffeta is for the petticoat. We'll start this tutorial off with the making of the petticoat. This petticoat is a full circle skirt with an 8 inch ruffle along the bottom. With the ruffle, I pleat it. A quick way to do this is using a fork. I have a nice tiny fork that works perfectly. If you'd like to learn more about this technique, give Google a search using the term fork pleats. After about an hour or two of pleating, you're ready to serge the circle and the pleated ruffle together. Now, this ruffle edge does need to be hemmed. My handy dandy rolled hem foot does the job so quickly. I'd actually recommend doing this step before pleating the ruffle, but in my case, I just forgot. Attaching the waistband is the last step. The waistband is double thick with all the seam allowances tucked inside. I then sewed it in place with the stitch in the ditch method. There's an inch and a half overlap for the placement of a skirt clasp. The petticoat is now complete. Let's move on to the outer wool skirt. This is also a full circle skirt. Due to the fabric width, it needs to be cut in two pieces. The skirt length is 30 and a half inches. First, let's sew the two pieces together. With one of the seams, I leave an eight and a half inch slit. Now, let's iron. I give the seam a nice pressing to allow the stitches to sink into the fabric. After that, I press the seam open. I then place something on the seam to hold it open as it cools. Now, let's move on to those interesting dart things on the waist and hips. To be honest, I don't know if that's the right name for them because I kind of made them up. So, we're just going to call them darts for now. To start off, lay the waist of the skirt on a flat surface. You'll need pins, a plastic template of sorts, tape measure, tailor's chalk, a calculator, and pen and paper. First off, there's going to be a dart on each of the seams. And there will be four in between each of those. To mark the placement of those, first measure the waist. Write that number down and divide it by five. You'll now place marks along the waist using that amount. I now mark that spacing on the other half of the waist. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. There's 10 darts total. I'm now going to roughly mark seven inches down from the waist. Since this line sits roughly at the hip line, we're gonna call it the hip line. I now measure this distance and then divide it by five. Just as I did with the waist, I now take this measurement and apply it to the hip line.
Before I move on, I make sure it's all evenly spaced. I now connect my two markings on the waist and the hip and add a definite seven inch mark. I then place pins at the hip marks. This allows me to create that same spacing on the other half of the skirt. I can now flip the skirt over and finish marking my dart lines. The lines I just created will be the folding point for each of the darts. I quickly pin that fold in place and now I can mark my sewing line. At the hip line, I move my template one and a quarter inches from the folded edge. Seven inches up from that, which is the waist, the template is even with the folded edge. At seven inches, mark an end to your stitch line. Once it's marked, securely pin the area. With the darts that lie at the seams, it's the same general idea. With this particular side, your seam acts as the folded edge. Pretty easy. But on the other side, the one with the split in it, it's not quite as easy. You're basically creating a half dart on both sides of the split. The angle of my stitch line is the same as the other darts. The difference is that it gets sewn together like so. You can see here, we still have a half inch seam allowance, but with a dart along the side of it. Once you have all 10 darts pinned, it's now time to sew. Once they're all sewn, we now press the darts open. Well, sort of. It's kind of hard to explain, so just watch for a bit. Once I'm done doing this, I then press this on it and hold it there as the seam cools. This will set the pressing. I then place some pins on these edges. On the seam that splits open, this is how I press it. I now sew where I place those pins. This will make the dart not close back up. I'm still not sure if I explained the process of these dart things, I don't even know if what to call them, but they're basically something I made up to match what I saw on the original skirt. So hopefully the video taught and showed you better than what I said. I guess you could call that my disclaimer, but hopefully you understood. If not, please let me know in the comments. And now let's move on from these dart thingy, majab, whatever. The embroidery, an iconic part of the skirt. I actually made my embroidery pattern. Currently, I don't want to sell my pattern, so I'll just explain the process for now. I first printed up an image of the skirt pattern, so from the costume, so it's very blurry, and then I traced it, and then filled it in with Sharpie, and then put it into my wonderful program called PE Design, which digitizes pictures. I then let my brother PE 770 embroidery machine do the rest. The placement of these embroidery motifs are in between where the two dart things lie. There's 10 of them along the hem. I stabilize the embroidery with a tearaway stabilizer. I slightly stretch my wool fabric as I place the stabilizer under it. This is to make up for the slight gathering all the different stitches of the embroidery make on the fabric. I then place my hoop, get it all straightened out, 
and voila, the embroidery machine does the rest. Again, this is the Brothers PE770 machine. I've had it for several years and used it for several different projects and it's held up. And no, this is not an ad, though it'd be kind of neat if it was. Once the machine has done its magic, I can now tear away the stabilizer. And a quick hint, you can let the machine do its work while you make the jacket or the petticoat or anything. And now let's sew the hem. Grab your silk dupioni and we're going to cut thick bias cut strips. I believe mine are about three inches wide. You'll need a lot of this, enough to cover the whole hem. You then sew all your different pieces together on a diagonal, like so. And we now attach it to the skirt. And as you sew, slightly stretch the silk. We then iron the seam out and fold it over like so. And then we hand stitch the edge. I personally love to hand sew my hems because I just love it. But look at this result. That's why I love it. It's invisible. And now, last but not least, the waistband. To reduce bulk, I make my waistband out of the lightweight wool. I have these plackets cut. These will go alongside the split side of the seam. Here you can see my half dart. This side will stay like this, whereas the other side of the split will fold over like so. This gets some hand sewing to hold it down. Once that's done, we can now move on to the actual waistband. This is more of the prep work for the waistband. Just like the petticoat, this is a double thick waistband with all the seam allowances tucked inside. Instead of the stitch in the ditch method, I hand sew it. All that's left is to attach the skirt clasps and the hooks and eyes. Now that the skirt is complete, Clara's toy soldier outfit is 100% finished. If you have followed along with this tutorial and have finished your own replica of Clara's toy soldier outfit, please leave a comment below. And also, please link to pictures of the finished outfit. I would love to see your work. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned so much. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future video tutorials. As always, thanks for watching and learning with me.